Hi, AppSec engineers. I hope you're having a great holiday season. I hope you're taking it easy and taking some rest in this particular holiday season. And I hope you're all staying safe, right? So this is gonna be our last video for 2021. Now, yesterday I put out a small code snippet in Python that was vulnerable in several ways. Now in this video, I'm just gonna be quickly walking through some of those security issues that I've created, of course, I introduced in this particular Python code snippet for an API. And I'm gonna talk about some of those fixes. First of all, the issues, the vulnerabilities, what happened. And then I'm gonna be looking at some of the fixes uh, that you should be implementing for something like that. So it's gonna walk through a real world example of how something was vulnerable and how something was made a little bit more secure. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna claim that it's 100% secure or anything, but I do uh, intend to make it a lot more secure than I found it. So let's get started with this video. I'm really excited. And here's wishing all of you a very happy and prosperous 2022. I hope you have a great year and I hope you have a, a very productive 2022 ahead of you. And let's get started with the rest of the video. All right, now let's look at the insecure example. Now in the insecure example that I'm gonna be looking at we are creating a sign up functionality where we're essentially uh, signing up a user so user can sign up themselves. So that is the functionality. And uh, you will see that this is the model that I'm using. So I'm using a uh, model uh, modeling tool called Pydantic. Now this is a very popular uh, tool in the Python world. It's called Pydantic. Now, Pydantic is basically for validation and management and things like that. So you can create your own model. So it's kind of like ORM functionality, but it just gives you a generic kind of a modeling capability where you can use that to write validation and things like that. So I am being a responsible developer. I am modeling this with Pydantic, but you will see very soon that I've not done a very good job of modeling it. So basically what is happening here is that I am creating the user or the user can sign up as a user and the user is coming in with this particular model where the user has an email, a password. See, one of the things that I have done is I've said that the role is supposed to be one of these uh, and ideally the user should not be able to set that, but it's in my model and this is another thing the user should not be able to set, right? Is user approved? Obviously you don't want the user to approve themselves this is a scenario where the user is approved through some kind of a third party process or some other kind of an out of band process. But clearly, uh, you will see very soon that that does not work the way I think it should work, right? So let's quickly have a look at this. First of all, um, I am going to UVCon, I mean, underscore insecure, I think. Yeah, main underscore insecure. Uh, oops. Uh, poetry shell, I guess. Yeah, I need to. Ubicon, poetry. I'm using poetry to manage the hopefully this should work. So I'm using fast API which is why I'm using Uvicon. Oh, mistake. Insecure. Yeah, looks like we have our application running. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple of requests to our application. Okay, so I'm going to make HTTP port, HTTP local host. I'm going to create a user, right? So this is going to create a user. And I'm going to make email. I'm going to do a first uh, a genuine user creation. So password, hello world. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to create this particular user. Now, once I create this particular user, body role, okay. Body role missing. Oh, okay. I need the role. Okay. Role parameter is set to user yeah so i've created this user successfully as you can see i've created this user now this is obviously not great because i have first of all allowed the user to create their own role and worse than that is now if i go into my database i'm using ArangoDB, which is a very cool graph database that i love to use 
So you will see that the user approved is still false because the user has not figured out that it's something called user approved and the role is user, which means that I can still pretty much manipulate this, right? There's mass assignment all over the place that is possible. I can do an authorization by bypass and elevation escalation of privileges with mass assignment. So if I sign up as another user who's somehow aware of these fields, so HTTP put again, now I'm just going to sign up as another user test2.com password low world two okay and role let's make the role admin and is user approved is equal to true and now you'll see that i've created this particular user and since i've created this user this user is now set to true and the user has been able to elevate privileges so this is a huge problem because I don't want the user to be able to set a certain number of model fields. So I need to do a bunch of things. So let's look at what is wrong here. First of all, the passwords being stored, plain text, horrible practice, right? Horrible, horrible practice. Very, very bad. Uh, I'm Then there is mass assignment all over the place where I'm allowing the user to set their own um, parameters. These are protected parameters. I should not allow the user to set their own parameters, which is a problem. So I need to make a few changes to my model. I need to make a few changes to my, uh, to the way the entire model works and the way my code works. So let's look at that and let's see how it is going to actually work. So the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to make a few changes to my model. I'm going to remove this from my uh, model, right? I'm going to remove these two protected fields from being set as part of the model. I'm going to remove it, but I'm going to still use it. Let's talk about how that is going to be done. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import something called a uh, I'm going to import an email string. So I'm going to first validate this as an email, right? So the email needs to be validated as an email. I can literally put anything in there right now. The other thing is we want to be able to uh, protect the password. We want to be able to hash the password in some way. So I'm going to do that as well. So I'm going to import beaker. So I'm going to use Bcrypt, which is a very, a very powerful, very well-known uh, key stretching mechanism for protecting passwords. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to. So now that we've passed this, uh, we've created an init functionality. Let's look at what we're going to do. So we're going to uh, run the constructor, which is going to pass again uh, all the arguments that. We're just going to pass to the constructor and do some changes, make some changes to the attributes, right? So we're going to do object dot set attribute. Now we're going to make a few changes mandatorily. We want to be able to change some things or we want to be able to set some fields without the user being able to influence them. That is the most important thing here. Okay, so that is first thing what we want to do. So what we want to do is take the password and set the password attribute. So what we want to do is we're going to generate a bcrypt hash which is bcrypt dot hash pw where we're going to take the self dot password dot encode which is going to be the byte array variant of that and we are going to do bcrypt we're going to generate a salt for that we're going to do gen salt let's just do a 10 round of that so we're going to set the password attribute here to the uh oh i need to set the self uh what does self attribute okay self name okay string value okay name string value any okay that's fine i think the password is going to be set to bcrypt underscore hash dot decode dot decode sorry it's a string value so it needs to be decoded so object now we're going to make a few other changes we're going to set the attribute to self, we are going to do is user approved. Now, this is not being set by the user. This is automatically being set by my model. So every time a user signs up, the user signs up with an approved state as false, right? So we want the approved state as false. And the other thing we're going to do is self, uh, we are also going to set the role to be a user no we don't want the user to be able to set their own role as an administrator so we're setting the user role as a role to begin with so as a user to begin with we're not doing anything fancy 
uh, beyond that. So what we're doing is we're forcefully setting certain attributes for the user, right? So we're saying that we crypt hash, we're, uh, we are making sure that the password is, uh, is hashed, uh, is key stretched and hashed. And we are kind of only allowing the user to set an email. So we're kind of validating that automatically because we're setting that as an email string, which means the user's email, uh, at least the email, the structure of an email is validated uh, based on the uh, internal validation of this email string uh, object, right? So that is something that we already have. And let's say we want to add some additional uh, data in there as well. So let's do object dot. So let's say I want to capture along with this, I want to capture when the user data was created. So created on, I do date time dot date time. Actually, let's import date time first from date time import date time i'm going to do date time dot utc now which is going to give me the utc now timestamp and we're going to push this into the database in iso format so this makes it a little more secure right so even though the user i'm i'm already doing some validations here and most of the parameters i am not allowing the user to set at all all of the mass assignment stuff is kind of gone right now okay so now i'm going to run my code again i think it's already running yeah it's already running now let's try and sign up again so i'm going to do http put http localhost 8000 slash create user email uh, test3.com password hello world one two three okay so it's a horrible password but nevertheless you can do additional validations on the password if you want but i just chosen not to do it oh one positional argument but two were given i'm not sure what i did wrong here let me just see my model reference super in it oh i don't need the uh, self again so my bad i don't need the self i just need the keyword arguments for that to work so now that we've made the changes let's go ahead and see whether it actually works let's see whether our security fixes have actually worked so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to sign up as a user with just the basic stuff the email and the password and see whether that works now it should work uh, and the user is created now once the user has been created let's refresh and see what's stored in the database you'll see that in the database, we have what we want. We have, first of all, the bcrypt uh, hashed password, which is always a good thing. And we have had these two uh, sensitive attributes being set by the, uh, in the code itself, right? It's automatically set to false. So it's set to false and the role is set to user. The user, the user does not have the ability to influence these uh, attributes, which are sensitive private attributes or protected attributes right so let's say the user so this is obviously much more secure so first of all we're hashing the password and then we're doing both of these things much more secure and we also added a created on um, attribute where we've captured when the user record was created in utc type right so this is very useful now let's see if we can actually go ahead and try and manipulate this right so let's see if we can actually go ahead and try and add a change a role and make the user approve true and whether that works now this you will see should not work because we have we are we are not allowing the user to set that we are overriding those fields automatically so you'll see that even though the user entered whatever it really doesn't matter because in the code we are overriding this right we are setting the attribute we are ourselves we are hard coding that attribute setting in a in a certain way so that as a re as a result you don't really have the user being able to set those sensitive attributes now this can be done based on the kind of modeling tool that you use or you can also exclude certain fields certain modeling tools allow you to exclude certain fields i don't think that's possible in pydantic i'm not 100 percent sure but since we have like a way to override and set attributes ourselves we are just doing that in this particular thing but in a lot of orm tools or modeling tools you have the ability to exclude certain attributes from being set so that's something that you can do so that uh, that's the end of our video today that just gives you an example i just shared this uh, code snippet yesterday and i thought let's talk about this as a video to end out our uh, 2021 i hope you had a good uh, 2021 and i hope you have a great 2022 
I look forward to seeing you in the new year. I have a lot of content, a lot of new stuff that's planned from AppSec Engineer and V45 over the next year. So I'm really excited about it and I'm sure, uh, and I would like all of you to join in uh, with me for the new year as well. Have a great year and stay safe out there. Thank you so much.